Hello everyone, welcome back to video number two on this little Honda Z50 that we started. Uh, the first video was just a walk around and kind of took an assessment of what we had up on the table. As you can see, I've gone ahead and tore the bike down, kind of stripped it down. Um, you know, that's just unbolting parts. You guys have seen that a hundred times. I really didn't think you needed to see it again. Uh, did have a little bit of carnage. The headlight bucket is pretty much junk. Uh, this was an old inner tube that was wrapped around the frame to hold the, the gas tank in place. I lost both knobs. One knob broke in half, and then we broke the uh, bolt on the other knob. So we'll have to deal with that when we get ready to put it back together. And then this is just some of the parts that we took off the I think the fender and we a back tire back there. I did find this interesting on that exhaust. That's an old license plate. I hadn't seen that before. The old stamp style license plate, kind of neat. But uh, today's video is going to just probably um, revolve around the engine and seeing if we can get it to actually run. If you remember from the last video, uh, we don't have a set of points and we don't have a flywheel. That concerns me a little bit, not gonna lie. Why, why did somebody take the points and the flywheel off of this if it was a running bike? Uh, you know, it does, does have this janky uh, lawnmower carburetor that someone has, you know, just basically glued on there. Um, so I have found in my stash, I found an old flywheel, I found a set of points and I found a carburetor that is uh, just should match the patina of the rest of the bike pretty well. So we'll have to see if that, if all that can uh, be brought back to life. So I'm gonna set you up in a stand and the first thing we're going to do is see if we can't get the points installed. We are lucky that, you know, it, they did leave us the nut and the washer for the, to hold the flywheel on and there is the woodruff key you might not be able to see it, but there's a Woodruff key in there, so that's good. So, yeah, I think today we're just going to see if we can get this thing to go putt-putt. Um, if that goes really, really quickly, then we may move on to something else. But I think today this that it's going to... It'll be a good 20-minute video or better on that, and that's probably long enough. Okay, first thing I want to do is make sure that the hole for the screw is clear. That seems to be good. That seems to have good threads. Then there is a, another hole underneath here that the pin for the point sets in and it looks like it's got some crap in it. And it's just dirt. It's not threaded or anything. That's just it's just a you know I'm gonna get a get some WD 40 really quickly and spray that just to kind of lubricate that. It doesn't move on a That's it, just spray it back at me. It doesn't, uh, you know, it, it's not like it rotates because you lock it down with the, with, the, uh, with the screw, but if you do need to adjust the points, I have no idea what this point set of points is out of. feels like it's in there and feels good so now we just need to get this there's one single wire here that we need to attach to the points Let's see if I can get it back out well let's leave it in there Let's see if we can get the wire on it Come 
You can tell I uh, work with too many lifens and not enough of these old points style engines. I don't know what I'm doing. Somebody go, somebody's out there going, there is a way easier way to do that. They're probably right. I don't have a, uh, a wrench that small. Isn't that sad? We're going to have to rip her. Going back to pliers. I don't like to use pliers on stuff like that. Okay. Let's see if we can get the screw in there. brought some needle nose. I'm going to spray the uh, the little, there's a little like uh, felt piece here. Just kind of lubricate it a little bit. All right, so you've got a woodruff key that keeps the flywheel in the correct position. My points are opening up before I right, right there. What we got? Don't look to be. Put this on here just to kind of hold it in place for a second. I've got that on all the way. Uh, forgot to get a straight screwdriver for sticking in there to, to adjust the points. I'm not getting any movement out of my points. I wonder if there's something wrong with the... There they go. I just didn't have them adjusted far enough. There, there we go. All right. So, let's... Uh, I'm assuming that's plugged into the correct wire. Doesn't look like it is to me. It's hard to tell. Before I took that off, I should have determined which one of the wires. I would think it should have been. You guys, yeah, you guys not even looking at me, are you? Back out just a little bit. We've got the plug that comes up out of the stator, and they've got one wire plugged straight to the coil. And in my opinion, they got it plugged into the wrong wire. I would think it would need to be onto this black one, the dark one, and they've got it on the, the one above it. But you know what? Before we change anything, let's try it. 
let's uh all right i'm gonna uh sit it so you don't have to hear me scooting the stand around let's uh i'm gonna to shut you off and move the stand around to the other side of the engine first thing i want to do is trim back this spark plug wire so we can get the boot on and make a good connection. Let's see. Uh, I'm dropping everything. I'm trying to get the insulator back out of the way. Let's try this again. All right. I'm gonna give us about a 10% chance of having spark because one, I don't think that's plugged into the right wire. I didn't see anything. No. I don't see anything. Hang on, I've got to get us set. I've got the front wheel off and the whole thing wants to sit, fall off. All right, I'm gonna go around and change to a different wire. And I'm going to put my drill on it so I turn it over faster. Let's see if we got any fire now. Nope. I have to, uh... oh, we've got fire now. Just by turning it by hand, I can see it. Let's see if you guys can So I wonder if they had that plugged into the wrong wire and thought they had issues with the points. I hope you guys can see that. We've got pretty good fire. I wonder if they had it plugged into the wrong wire the entire time, thought they had issues with the points and took those out. All right, let's, uh, yeah, I think we've got decent compression. What do you say we uh, get some fuel, dribble in there, and let's see if it goes putt-putt. I brought my socket. this uh, carburetor works. Let's see if we can just pull it right through that carburetor. Ah, this drill. I hate these keyless chucks.
like it was going to go. There we go. Ah, oh, you rat. Oh, I took the uh, nut off. All right. So let's, uh, I think we've got a runner. I'll get that good and tightened down. I think we've got us a runner. Uh, let's get this mess taken off of here. Actually, I think, well, you guys are probably looking at that, aren't you? Kinda. I don't even know if these bolts are doing anything. They might be. They might be putting a little bit of down pressure on that thing. Yeah, they were. They were doing a little bit of something. Come on, come out of there. Oh gosh. I want to suck all that down in there. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what we had. So I'm going to uh, move you guys over to the workbench and we're going to disassemble this one real quick. Uh, when I picked up this carburetor, out of, uh, I, just, I just have a five gallon bucket full of carburetors. When I picked it up, the, the slide and the top were not on it. So we need to make sure that our slide will move smoothly and we might as well just go ahead and take it apart and make sure that the you know, the inside looks okay and so forth. So let's do that. Let's, let's move over and tear our carburetor apart and see if we can't get one to function to see if we can get it to run. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see what kind of goodness we can find in this thing. First of all, we're going to get rid of these old hoses, both the drain and the fuel line so we're not messing with those hmm all right see it looks like we got some crap in the fuel line right there hang on just a second let me get that little pick i had earlier that's not too promising right out of the Oh boy. I hope this isn't too scary. I don't know if I have another Z50 carburetor that's you know, not already on a bike. <laughs> oh, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. Oh, the float is stuck. Hmm, fellas, I don't know. Can we bring that back to life at all? Wow. Well, that broke free. I don't know what the chances of getting a pin out are. Does the pin just push out like normal ones or? Actually, like the the needle is actually hmm. okay. 
let's take out some of this other stuff and start spraying some WD-40 through passages and seeing what we get. We're probably going to have to put this in the carb cleaner, but I was kind of hoping not to. Just to kind of speed things up, but we can we can wait, I guess. Yeah, come on. Obviously, I'm the jets or what's. <laughs> I don't even think the main get sprayed up through there. grab those pliers doesn't look like there's a slot in the in it to get a screw to take it out with a screwdriver See if we can get it out without destroying it too bad Does it screw out or does it pull out? It acts like it screws out, but it doesn't act like it's coming out anymore. You can tell I don't know anything about Z50 carburetors. Well, I hate to, because I don't think there's anything flowing through it. No, it doesn't seem to be. That's just... Actually, it does come up through there. It was getting some flow. Let's see. We are definitely not getting any flow out. So we need to get the, the flow off and clean the, the path of the fuel to go down to the bowl. We're not getting any. Hmm. I wish I knew what that did. I may have to uh, do a little research here. Well, mm, doesn't seem to pull out. I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to shut you down and I'm going to work on getting the float pin out and maybe go online and do a little research here so I can figure out what it is I'm trying to trying to accomplish.
Well, I actually think I have this thing cleaned out enough that uh, we'll be able to get it to work. Uh, I had to take out the seat for the, for the needle because it was plugged. We had no fuel flowing. into the carburetor. Um, this main, I never did get it pulled out. I did uh, hit it with some air and a little wire and got it, uh, got it to where I could see through it. And then the little idle circuit right here I was able to pull that out and using my handy dandy uh, welding cheapy welding brush wire I tell you what if you don't if you're looking for a wire to clean jets <laughs> I can't recommend one of these highly enough and uh, you can actually pull the pull the wire out I know you probably can't see that in my fingers but you can pull the wire out to get a little longer piece um, works really well for cleaning those small jets i am concerned we do have a this gasket is brittle and broken so we're gonna more than likely have a leak at the at the bowl let's see yeah go ahead and put that on there where how did it go on there we're getting close we're getting close. Got to turn it a little bit more. I did not put uh, the carburetor into the cleaner, the ultrasonic cleaner. I just kind of picked away and cleaned at things the best I could. Which way did that pull out? I think I pulled it out from this direction. I thought I did. Maybe not. Let's try this way. Did I burr it? It doesn't feel like it. Nope. Ah, I pushed it in too far and didn't get my... Pull it all the way back out. <clears throat> there it goes. That's about where it was at. So that all seems to work. Yeah, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a bad leak here, but I, I'm sure that's a gasket that can be purchased if we need to. You can already tell it's been smashed. Somebody the reason it broke was somebody didn't get it down into the groove the last time it was taken off or something. Or at some point when it was taken off, somebody didn't get it down in there. Did I put all the pieces back in? Yeah, I haven't put the Right, but I got everything in the bowl in there. Which one went where?
yeah, that's the way it went. I didn't check it. I'm going to half, one, half, I don't know, something like that. And then this is just the uh, idle for the slide. All right. Now, the slide itself, I think we're going to go get a different cable. This cable seems to be kinked and it doesn't move very well. If I can get it out of there without losing parts everywhere. All right, I'm going to, I think we got it all back together. Uh, I'm gonna go get another throttle cable. Yeah, I dropped, now I dropped the slide. Uh, hopefully I haven't dented the slide. Hopefully this screws on there. I didn't check that. Yeah, okay. I'm going to put, uh, put a throttle cable on it, put this back together, and then we'll move over to the bike itself. And let's see if it runs. I'm just going to leave the insulator that was on the carburetor. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, that was on the engine when we... I did clean off some of the the uh, sealant be curious to see what happens here between the janky carb and the The stuff that's going on with the engine and well, actually not I guess the engine other than the carburetor wasn't bad the rest of the bike had a lot of a lot of bad hardware I tell you what when I broke this thing down every piece of hardware fought me for every turn of the of the bolt or the nut or whatever it was I was taking off it seemed like hopefully it goes back together Oh good, we tightened up. I was afraid that we might not have threads in there. Let's see what this one does. Guys, don't ever don't ever crank on this stuff too much or you'll just, just kind of snug it or you'll pull the threads right out of that aluminum. That's that feels pretty decent. I've got a stand. It's actually an engine stand. But it's got a fuel tank attached to it. Let's just make sure we've got flow of fuel. Hang on a second. Oh yeah, it's yep, yep, I got I got fuel that'll come out. Now, I truly do expect this to leak really bad. What's it doing? Well, either the uh, either the float didn't let hasn't let any fuel into the bowl, or it actually did seal. All right, let me double check what you're looking at. Yeah, you're kind of looking at it. <clears throat> So I've got a throttle cable hooked up. We'll go ahead and give it some choke. adjusted the, the points, the valves, or anything. Oh, I 
I think I, did I take the nut off? No, I didn't take the nut off. Let's give it some choke again. to run it through the gears. I felt like I had it in neutral. Are these, <laughs> are these uh, all the way down or all the way up? I felt like I had it in neutral. Hang on just a second. Let's, uh, let's fire it, see if it'll fire up again. All the way up is neutral. Okay, there we go. Well, I guess our carburetor's not that clean. It uh, doesn't want to seem to run off a choke. into the bowl. anyway so I think this video's gotten long enough um, 
So that makes me that makes me feel good. So I think I will actually go ahead and take the engine off of the the frame, and maybe clean the frame up, get as much of the dirt and the, you know get see if we can't clean it up just a little bit, um, and then we will come back in the next video and maybe tackle rims and tires and do some of those things. Uh, you know, I had talked about doing this in three videos but some of your comments were like nah man do it in four or five so i don't know we'll see um but uh, i think today is long enough we'll, we'll quit here and that's pretty exciting to you know we didn't do a whole lot and got that actually back up and running pretty easily so guys thanks for following along and we will see you on the next video when we tackle something else on this bike